TNT Sports welcomes you back to Richmond as the Winston Cup drivers get ready for the 26th race of the season and driver intros continue with a lap around the track so all the fans get a good look. Now, about last night, well, you know the old joke, I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out? Well, in the Bush Series race here Friday night, they trained more than just paint. Let's take a look at some of the on-track action beginning on lap 18. Greg Biffle and Jay Sauter get together. Jay goes around and ends up in the wall. One more view from the onboard camera of the 60 car. Sauter going around and crashing. Then, after spending 87 laps making repairs, Sauter returned to the track. And on lap 184, roughly an hour and 20 minutes later, Sauter's car suddenly turns right and takes Biffle out of the race. Biffle was, well, irritated and delivered a punchline that Sauter didn't think was overly funny. Now, temper has always been a part of short track racing, but last night and again today, there has been some concern about premeditated acts on the racetrack and the possibility of potential injury. Now, NASCAR President Mike Helton is not with us here this weekend, away attending a family event, but we are joined by Kevin Triplett, the Director of Operations for NASCAR. And first of all, Kevin, thank you for joining us and your view, NASCAR's view, of the incidents between the 60 and the 43 last night. Well, and, and I think it goes beyond last night. Uh, we've had... Um some aggressiveness over the last couple of weeks and it's uh, something that uh, apparently boiled over a little bit last night we'll take a look at it we are looking at it. we spent today talking about it but as you said Mike's not here uh, as president of the company plays a very important role in what we do uh, John Darby the Bush series director uh, has a lot of input I have some input Gary Nelson obviously Mr. France and uh, when you're running a race event um, and, and you have so many things going on, it's something that you'll discuss, you know, after the event's over with. So a decision hasn't been made on what to do. Uh, but I would expect that, just like any other professional sport, when something gets out of hand or uh, an altercation takes place between uh, uh, athletes, uh, sanctions uh, are imposed. Mm -hmm. Fines don't seem to slow these guys down, Kevin. Well, I don't know that I would completely agree. It would slow me down. Uh, but... Uh, you know, I think I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the competition, and you know, it, it's a tough time of year right now. I mean, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of teams that are not doing as well as they'd hoped. There are other teams that are doing better than they thought, and they're trying to hang on to that. And when you get down to this time of year, and you have a lot going on, and and you're trying to stay in the point race with all the money on the line, um, you know, we want these guys. To, you know, we want them to compete, right? And we want them to be emotional, and we want them to be. It's when that emotion crosses the line that we have to step in. Is that something NASCAR is going to watch with a more critical eye now after the last few weeks? Well, I, I think we always look at it, and I, I think I think it's a very fine line to walk. It's a, you know, at the risk of sounding cliché, it's a tightrope to walk. You know, when you're dealing with trying to curb the emotion that these guys have to have to do what they do. Uh, at the same point, and, and by the same time, it can't go over that. And yeah, I mean, we're we're going to take a look at things, and if. Uh, if it continues to escalate, we'll we'll continue to escalate. Kevin, thanks for your time. We look okay, forward guys. to a great race tonight. Have a good night. Kevin Triplett, Director of Operations for NASCAR. Benny, the 1973 NASCAR Winston Cup champion. Your thoughts on what has become a very hot topic here. Well, you know, Bill, there's a, there's a code of honor amongst the drivers in the garage area. If, if someone hits you, knocks you out of the way, then you're supposed to retaliate. You're supposed to knock them back out of the way. Kind of like Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd up at Bristol. Uh, what two weeks ago on the last lap Rudd follows Rick Rudd follows Rusty Wallace in the corner makes contact knocks him out of the way takes the position away Rusty didn't like that and he quickly showed Ricky Rudd that he didn't like that by spur of the moment spur of the moment by spinning him out down in turn one now Bill I don't really have a problem with that uh, you know again I would prefer not to see it but I really don't have a problem with what happened there but it's a premeditated stuff that I have a problem last night you saw in the 43 car Made con the 60 car made contact with him, and he spent an hour and 20 minutes in the garage area. He comes back on the racetrack and makes contact with the 60. I mean, I can't prove it was on purpose, mm -hmm. but I talked to 75, 75 people today, and I asked that question. Do you think it was on purpose? Every one of them said, yes, I do. I think he intended to spin the 60 car out, to crash the 60 car. Well, there's a couple things can happen. Number one, you can hurt the guy in the, in the 60. And the second thing is... <laughs> I mean, after all, Bill, the, you just can't do this stuff. The premeditated stuff has got to in some way, somehow they can't go in the garage area, come back on the racetrack, and hit someone. It's got to stop. And the point you wanted to make, serious injury or worse, and the damage to the sport could be 
beyond repair. Well, exactly, because sooner or later, some force will come in that will make the damage unrepairable. Benny, thanks a lot. We look forward to plenty of action on the track tonight. 43 Winston Cup stars. And next, as we continue with the back-to-school edition of NASCAR on TNT, the question is, does my driver play well with others? lights seem to bring out the best in everybody. When they turn the lights out, all the demons come out of those race car drivers. I don't know why, but it happens. The Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes on TNT is brought to you by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy with Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. And welcome back to Richmond. Now, two weeks ago tonight, it was Bristol. Tough race, tough track. One winner and 42 losers. There was a lot of activity on that track. Fireworks during the race, and as we've seen, fireworks after the race. We expect to see more of that here tonight because when the fans watch action at this short track, they expect two things, short tempers and no shortage of excitement on what has traditionally been one wild night. Richmond's, in my opinion, probably the perfect size racetrack. The fans are right there. I mean, there they are, and you see them. See, what makes it so raceable is just the way it's banked. There's rarely tracks on the circuit where you can make a pass on the outside of a guy. You can't do that, uh, design a track to run two or three wide. I don't think you can set out to design one. It just happens. And it just so happens that many of racing's most electrifying moments come in the dark. For every race fan and every race driver, there are two simple words that brighten every race day. The lights make the cars look like they're going faster. They make the sparks look brighter. Everything, everything seems to, to come out a lot more at night. It might be Saturday night race, and when we were all growing up. The nighttime definitely adds drama. I'm telling you what, when they turn the lights out, all the demons come out of those race car drivers. I don't know why, but it happens. It kind of gets you back in touch with your roots. I've got to get to the front and 50 laps. It's hard not to feel that way, because that's how we were, we were trained, because we all raced for four, five, maybe 10, 15 years at these short tracks. The tires respond, react better at night, and the cars, you know, are a little more powerful and, and uh, wind up handling a little better. It is just neat racing. Fans love the speed and sparkle of short track racing. You can't hear how drivers are feeling, but you can sure see what they're thinking. The bright lights, the intrigue of night, the intensity of competition. All you need is one guy to stir the pot. probably the most aggressive bunch of guys in the car and outside of the car that you'll ever find. Does that help you? Well, I think I think it does. I, I, I mean, I'm still a firm believer in nine times out of ten that the, the aggressor will be the one that comes out on top. It's very easy to be overly aggressive when you're, when you're in control of a, a two-ton piece of equipment like that. You get to banging around with your car and doing probably some things that you normally wouldn't do. Macho. Yeah. You feel macho? I don't know about macho. You just feel like uh, you got the biggest gun in the house. I don't want to be pushed out of the way, and I'm not going to push anyone out of the way. There's always the guys that have their own system and their own code, um, and uh, some of them, you know, get away with it more than others. Seems to me, though, your car usually does have a scratch if you want. Well, it's not because I've intended it to happen. These people just have a tendency to run into me. I don't know why they do those things. The aerodynamic portion of these cars is so critical. You don't want to beat the front fenders up because that's what creates all the downforce. So if you can keep a clean car, oh, a couple donut rocks down the side is okay. But as long as you don't mess around with those front fenders, I think you'd be okay. I think if you're not aggressive in this sport, you'll probably get 
trampled over by somebody, in, in whether it's on the racetrack or off the racetrack. In this race one year ago, Jeff Gordon held off a hard charging Dale Earnhardt to win on what was one wild night here at Richmond. This evening, Gordon will lead the field to the green flag, hoping to extend his lead in the race for the championship. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me double shot as TNT Sports presents the NASCAR Winston Cup Series from Richmond, Virginia. It's the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Richmond is a challenging place to get around. Lots of traffic, a few tricky turns, and the occasional irate driver. And that's just getting into the track. The three-quarter mile Richmond International Raceway is the short track that thinks it's a super speedway. 43 drivers ready to race and leading them to the green flag. A three-time Winston Cup champion, a two-time winner at Richmond, a proven warrior who doesn't just want more. Like any true racer, he wants it all. And one thing that Jeff Gordon didn't have before this weekend was a pole in the fall race, but he did it this time. And Jeff, you know, the only thing that I see different on your car this weekend is a certain wascoey web. Is it the bugs factor that helped you out this weekend? Well, I see the bugs bunny or that chrome illusion paint. Uh, car certainly does look good. I think it just looks too good to run in the back, at least start in the back. So uh, we uh, guys have just been so awesome here lately. They've done such a great job preparing great race cars for us. And, you know, it's making my job a whole lot easier. I mean, the guys in the engine shop are doing a great job on the engines and the guys in the chassis shop. So uh, we're having a lot of fun out there, and the car's running good. We just hope we can keep it up there all night. That's right. He doesn't want to run in the back. He will be the rabbit tonight starting out front. Matt? Three races ago, Sterling Marlin put the Dodge nameplate back in the win column. Tonight he chases another elusive Dodge mark in history. He rolls off third. He returns to Richmond with his Dodge boys, the site of the Detroit Automakers' last short track win 25 years ago. But a win tonight would be a major accomplishment and a big surprise. Sterling's never won a Winston Cup short track race and only one lap here in his last six starts. But then again, that's been the story of Sterling's season. One big surprise after another to Liz Allison. Jimmy Spencer and Matt Kenseth were a part of the big story last night. They finished one, two in the Bush race. However, their luck has not been as good in Winston Cup this year. They're hoping to turn their luck around tonight at Richmond under the light. Marty. Well, Liz, too bad there wasn't a million dollar bonus last night. Could you imagine Spencer with an extra million bucks? But that is the case for five guys tonight, including Bobby Labonte and Dale Earnhardt Jr. For Labonte, this is his 10th try at the no-bull bonus. Every time he has struck out, he's been in this position more than any other driver. And even though they're running better, he's honestly not at his best track. For this kid back in here, he is at one of his best tracks. He has won here three times, twice in the Bush Series, once in the Winston Cup Series, and tonight he has an absolutely terrific car. If you think Jimmy Spencer could do some damage with an extra million bucks, imagine what this guy could do. And Bill, I wonder what they would consume after the race was over. We'll ponder that, Marty. Right now, here are the five guys eligible for a million bucks. Burton, Labonte, Earnhardt Jr., Sadler, and Waltrip, all racing for the Winston Noble money. Five drivers and five very nervous fans as well.